Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about our good things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are playful of things, we are passing away to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Earthly things. Earthly things. You know, there's a lot in these readings, and there's no way in heck that I'm going to weave it all together. Not the way that I usually like to get it. I had an experience this week, it's a very busy week, very busy week here, and also in my job. Believe it or not, I have a full time job. And uh, I think some, some folks wonder what deacons do. Well, we work. <laughs> We do. A lot of us work, we have jobs, and, uh, but our connection to what we do in church is different than that. There's a lot of similarities between what I do for a living and what I do. Um, I'm a psychologist, I work as a psychologist. I, uh, I do a lot of education, I do a lot of teaching. And one of the things that I that I teach is mental health first aid. I'm gonna teach it here, what it is. And um, I'm gonna find the capacity. Not everybody wants to sit in eight hours of training, but we'll work something out. <laughs> when people say, hey, I want to be taught mental health first aid so I can help. I respond to that. We would all respond I to that, I think. I because somebody is asking for help. Well, why me? Why are they asking for help? Well, I'm really good at what I do. <laughs> you know, the Blue Cross Blue Shield. I've been doing it for a while. And so I'm the logical choice. You can't rest on your laurels if you do this kind of work. And so when you go into an environment, I was in Memphis, Tennessee, I drove out there on Friday, going back last night. So I'm a little, little dingy. <laughs> it's part of it. I had a lot of time to think on the way there. And uh, I was working on preparing for this for this sermon today, it was doing it different. What I did is I made sure I, you know, when I when I get ready for a sermon, I really start preparing for it a, a week and a half to two weeks ahead of time, depending on our on our rotation here. And I have a lot of time to read the Bible and to read online so that I can uh, bring things together in a in a coach way. So what I did this time, I, you know, you got all those hours on the road. You know, it's eight hours going to know. Because you got to, well, you got to use the restroom. <laughs> you know, you probably got to eat because it's seven and a half, eight hour drive. Um, so what do you do? Well, typically I listen to CNN. Yeah, and that's getting old. You know, the news is getting old. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of all of the anger and bitterness. But I feel a responsibility as a person who is involved in the community to know what's going on. So a lot of times I would listen to the news to try to pick up things that may apply directly either to what's going on here at the church or the community that I work with outside of here, which is all the mentally ill who are on tent here in the state. That's what I do. I administer mental health programs for tent here. So I had a lot of time to think. And uh, and also on the way back, you know, it's the same eight hour drive. I have a lot of time to think. And one of the words that, that really came to me clearly was like a bell ring. It really was. Wealth. What is wealth? What is wealth? Is it money? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. You know, look at the government. It's about money. Guys who are running the show. It's about money. That's my personal opinion, but it's the right one. 
about it's about money. And money is about power and politics. Over the years, I had to become adept at dealing with politics because I worked in Indian country. That sounds surprise in Indian country. There are Indian politics that you learn to respect. But in these passages that were read, you know, you got this guy working as a manager. I like this guy. I wish he was handling my student loans. <laughs> you know why? Because he was given all these merchants a break on what they owe his master who just fired him, basically. His master just fired him, so he said, well, you know, how am I going to take care of myself in the future? Well, I think I'll just discount what these guys owe to my manager. Interestingly enough, in the passage, the, uh, the master commends him for being shrewd. Commends him. The master acknowledges that this guy did some fast thinking and managed to had his nest in the respect that this guy believed that if he gave these folks a discount on what they owed, that when he needed help, they would take him into their home. You know, that's a lot of preoccupation with money, isn't it? it really is. Anybody in here preoccupied with money? <laughs> well, yeah. Because that's what the world revolves around, is money. Unless we change the way we think about it. What is wealth? I'll tell you what wealth is. Wealth is somebody sitting here being willing to record these sermons every Sunday. That's wealth. That's wealth. And it's not squandered wealth. He is using his wealth around understanding the technology to record messages that I believe in my heart Gail and I are sending out to the world. And you do the same by being here and being present. So yeah, money is a great thing. you got to have it to live. You truly do. You have to have it to live. But you cannot serve two masters. Lord, we've been hearing this a whole lot. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve well and serve Jesus Christ successfully. One really submerges you in desire for more. They both do when you do in life. If you have a relationship with Christ, the more you develop that relationship, the more important it becomes. If you have a relationship with wealth, that also becomes the most important thing. Are we concerned about that? Is anybody here excessively rich? I don't think so. You know, I'm not excessively rich. But what I'm aware of is that my preoccupation with money is an earthly thing. That Christ says we need to put away. We need to put away earthly things. He said, take up your cross and follow me. He said, give everything away to the poor. So you can't be preoccupied with wealth if you have nothing. Then you're preoccupied with Christ if you take in that path. Each one of you here has talents that make us as a church wealthy. And I appreciate it. 
You know, I appreciate, you know, the things that I see. The folks who come here and, and help out faithfully on a regular basis, you know, in spite of difficulties in their own lives, you know, difficulties with the church, they still keep coming back to help. That's wealth. That's wealth that's used to benefit what we do, which is to preach the gospel to every man and woman. Is that? Is that? So what is your wealth? What is your wealth? Understand it. Explore it. You know, is it playing a drum up here? Then play the drum. Enjoy it. And get better at it. Because the better we get, the more we celebrate Christ. And we're celebrating it really with the hands of our soul and the things that we do by being here, by doing these things. I believe we are blessing to God in Christ. But we got to work to stay that way. You have to be aware of it. God is telling us in these scriptures, be aware. I'm aware. He's saying it. I'm aware. I know where what's going on with you, and I'm telling you. Put away those yeah. things that you think are most important. Come to Christ. Preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. Yeah.